everybody and welcome to Handmade Studio. I'm Cheryl Han Woodlock. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own glazes simply, effectively and easily. Stay tuned and I'm going to show you how. Bye! The materials that you are going to need today for this workshop, you will need a powdered glaze. We'll talk about that in a minute. You will also need some water to mix up your powdered glaze. You are going to need a sieve. These are special. I will talk about those so you could have a small or a larger one. You will need a paintbrush as well and you will need a measuring cup and also a set of scales. I'll see you soon. Today I'm going to be working with a glaze that fits my clay. I actually work with a clay works clay that is TWE and a school white. It just works for me. But the glaze that I have chosen is CEG 190. Now, the manufacturer of my clay recommends this glaze for their clay. What that means is that the glaze is going to fit so I can use it in all weathers and I can use it for my domestic wear, for drinking cups and for everything else. If you have a different clay, go back to your manufacturer of your clay and find out what powdered glaze they recommend for you to use for your clay. Now, how do you know if your glaze fits? When your glaze actually what we call fits, it means that there is no crazing on your tile. Here is a tile and it has little cracks in it. And I'll show you how to test. Grab a marker, rub it onto your tile. Oops. Grab a tissue. And I'm using methylated spirits on this to wipe it back. Now when I wipe it back, you can see I've got all these crack marks that are showing up. That is how you test for crazy and to make sure your glaze fits. If your glaze doesn't fit, the problem is it won't be an all-purpose tile. It means that when you are doing your mosaics, you have to be conscious of the area that you are putting your tiles into, which means that in sub-zero temperatures where you have freeze-thaw conditions, this tile can't be used. The clay has to fit with the glaze. Then you can use it in all weather conditions. When we are mixing up our glaze, the other thing that we need to talk about is the sieve. You cannot use your kitchen sieve. It's not going to be fine enough. The sieves that I use are special sieves for ceramics or for glazing. These are called um, glazing sieves. And this one is by Talisman. It is a New Zealand brand. Now, the great thing about these is that they are super, super fine. This is a 100 mesh sieve. And a 100 mesh sieve means that for each centimeter, there are 100 little squares. I like to use a 100 mesh. That works really well. And it mixes my glaze up really well. You can use a small one like this, which is a lot cheaper than a big one like this sieve here. So these are around about $80 and this is around about $45. It's up to you which one you would want to use, but I recommend using a sieve. If you don't have a sieve, you can use a bar mix or a, um, a mixer from your kitchen. Once you use that for clay or your glazes, you really cannot use it any other time. It cannot go in back in with your food. Now, I'm going to be weighing out my glaze. On this, I have, for each kilo of gla powdered glaze that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be putting five and three quarter cups of water. I've done that because it's a measurement that I know it's easy to work with then, rather than using cups. The scales that I have here are not electronic. These are old measuring scales, and they actually go to 0.1 of a gram. 
I wrote, don't use electronic scales because I find that I have to find a PowerPoint and that's really annoying. Also, if I have it battery operated, my batteries tend to run out before I get to use them. So I just use this one. When you're working with powdered glaze, like I'm going to be working with here, you need to make sure you have a dust mask on because the glaze actually has silica in it and it's not good for your lungs. So I need to weigh out a kilo of glaze. A kilo of glaze will make up around about two, nearly two litres of fluid. I've made a little bit of a mess here. So what I'm going to use is a damp sponge and I'm, then I'm going to use this to dry it back. Never ever brush it off. And that's clean. This powder is in a bucket. I'm going to add water, but when I add water with this, what's going to happen is the dust is going to come up. There is going to be a bit of dust. So I'm going to put my mask back on. Now for this, I know I need five and three quarter cups of water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add five cups of water now, and I'm going to leave the three quarters when I'm actually doing cleaning my sieve. You would actually have seen a little bit of dust rising up. That's why I've got my mask on. Now I'm just going to use my hand. If you have any cuts on your hand, wear a glove. But I have no cuts on my hand, so I'm just going to put my hand in and mix this up. Okay, I can take my mask off now because all the... Um, powder is now mixed in with the water. I've also got a bucket nearby so every time I make a mess I can then clean my hands easily and I'm not going to get glaze all over my table. And it doesn't matter if I really get glaze on my table because I can wipe it back with the sponge and water. The next thing I'm <laughs> I can take my mask off now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now sieve the glaze. I have my ice cream bucket here and I've got my sieve. I chose a sieve and these fit really well in the ice cream container. So they are really, really good. Now you can use your cup and what we're going to do is just pour it's got lots of lumps in it, if you can see that. And that's where we need to sieve this glaze. By sieving it, we also make sure that everything is mixed properly so that I don't get any lumps or bumps, and, which makes the glaze not quite work. I've got my paintbrush and this paintbrush is just going to gently wipe over it. You don't want to use too much pressure because these sieves can break. They are very, very fine. So you do need to be gentle. It takes a bit of time to do this, so we will fast forward. You can see here that I have basically pushed all that through. When you look at the back, there's still a lot of glaze on that, that's okay, because I'm going to keep adding more cups of glaze into the sieve and I'm going to keep brushing. Now, I'm about to get down to, I've almost finished, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the last bit of glaze into here. So I'm just pouring that in and using my brush to get the last of it out. There we go. Now, the other thing too was that I had three quarters of a cup left. So I'm going to pour that into my measuring cup now. That's my three quarters of a cup. 
I'm going to just add a little bit of water to that to help get it through. But I can also use this water to clean off my cup a little bit more and to just get that last of that glaze out. Now also you will notice that this is cleaner because I've been using that last bit of water. So I'm getting all of that powdered glaze and the glaze that I've mixed in there. That is done. Now I can mix it up. Now, when I use this glaze, I've been using it for a very long time. I've been using it for almost 20 years. And I know what the consistency should be like. So that's why I've mixed up five and three quarters. Usually it's a liter or 750 ml per kilo of glaze. After 750 ml milliliters of water, you can then keep adding until the glaze feels right for your dipping purposes. Each glaze is a little bit different, so you will need to know how many cups of water you need to add. So for this, I have, when I look at it, my I can just see my fingernails through this, so I know that's what I am looking for. As I said, for each glaze, they work a little bit differently, so you will need to know how much water you are adding. So add your water, probably by half a cup and that way you can then remix it see how it looks on your test pieces get that glaze off because remember when it becomes powder it will become airborne and it will go into your lungs lungs so always wet and wipe everything remember wet wipe everything now the next thing i'm going to do is I've used these milk bottle containers. You need to make sure these milk bottle containers are well marked for your glaze. I've actually put this, it's a clear glaze. I put the name of the clear glaze, which is CEG 190. And I've put the quantity one kilo to five and three quarter cups. That way you will always remember what you are using. So now I need to pour my glaze into my container. So I will label it and I will be back. When I do this, I mix up five kilos at a time. And that way I can then siphon it off. But for you guys that are just going to be buying smaller quantities, like one kilo at a time, these are really, really handy. The milk bottles are great because you can pick them up, pop them in your shelf easily and then bring them out. So I've labeled my container so I know exactly what I've got in here and so I don't forget. I have a little bit down at the bottom. I'll just get my brush out and I'll brush that off. Now, if you wanted to, you could have used a funnel, but I've done this a few times and I usually only get a few dribbles. Remember, wet wipe. There you go. We now have our mixed glaze from our powder. It was really easy to do and it's really quite cost effective. I bought five kilos of glaze and out of that five kilos of glaze, this is one kilo and it makes up nearly two liters of glaze which is really really cost effective for under twenty dollars hi everybody if you like what i did today could you please hit that like button also remember to subscribe and ring that bell i'm cheryl hanwoodlock from handmade studio saying thanks for watching bye just a little side note when you are doing any cleanup do not put glazes or clay down your sink Always use two buckets, one for your first rinse, one for your second. The first rinse will just get the initial dirt off. So you rinse it out first using that first bucket. Then you can do your other final rinse in here, your other bucket, and that way it's clean. It's a really good way of being very, very economical and looking after the pipes in your studio. I'll see you later.